Hello, everybody, and welcome to the chapter 2 to 1, Introduction to Concurrent Catalysis within the Unit 2.2, Design of Reaction Cascades. In this introduction, it is the idea to give an overview about the background and the motivation. Why should we focus on the design of reaction cascades in organic synthesis and also making use of biocatalysis? as steps within these cascades. And to do that, I would like to start with a more general overview, going back to the question, how do we in general today use chemistry and apply chemistry for the production of pharmaceuticals, for example, or other industrial chemicals? And often, these type of chemicals in industry are produced in within multi-step synthesis. So this is certainly a key feature, in particular when it comes to more complex products, such as, for example, chiral products, which often require a range of diff different organic chemical reaction steps. Still, a feature of these processes, of these reaction sequences, is that typically, maybe not in all steps, but in many steps, isolation of the corresponding reaction products is conducted. So if you look on these overall multi-step synthesis, it looks as shown here in this picture, that you have a reaction step one followed by a workup step. Then you use the intermediate and purified form as a reagent or a substrate for the next step. Again, a workup step follows, and then you conduct another reaction. Finally, you get your product in pure form. Obviously, there are also advantages connected to that procedure, in particular because you have every time in each step a pure substrate which you can use. But at the same time, if you look on process efficiency, if you look on costs, but also if you look on sustainability, there are some drawbacks by means of conducting chemistry in such a form. So what you need in all of these workup steps typically is that you consume solvents, you have a demand of additional capacities. Usually the workup steps are exactly the stages which often require a range of so-called unit operation steps, extraction, distillation, drying process, precipitation, filtration, and so on. And consequently, of course, these are also the steps in which a substantial portion of waste is produced. On the other hand, for the preparation of the final product from a pure definition point of view, all these workup steps, workup step one, workup step two, leading to the intermediates, are not necessary. Only the final workup step for the product would be necessary, but not the one for, in this case, the first and the second intermediates. For many industrial products, for example, the field of pharmaceuticals, you have not only three steps, you have more than five, eight, ten, or even more steps. That means the number of intermediate isolations can become quite high. And that means, of course, also that the contribution of resulting waste production and, of course, also solvent demand is high then as well. So what would be a solution? If you look on this from the perspective of what would be the ideal process, actually, the ideal process would be that you could run such a type of reaction within a cascade process by eliminating all the unnecessary intermediate isolation steps. Actually, this is what nature is doing in a fermentation. When we look on biosynthesis, nature is not isolating a, a special um, intermediate. It's directly converting it to, each other, to the next one. So in principle, we could learn from this concept of nature also to avoid our product isolation procedures for intermediates and to run one reaction after the other until we get the final product. And ideally also for the final stage, um, a minimized worker would be desirable. So that means that we would have the combination of all three reaction steps followed by a ideally 
um, very straightforward workup for the final product as well. And that would lead to a decreased amount of solvents. It would lead to a reduced number of unit operation steps, and it could lead to a reduced amount of the resulting waste. Coming back now to the challenges in this field, obviously, if you would like to combine reactions with each other, the catalyst from the second reaction must be tolerant to the um, catalyst from the first one, which is still in the reaction solution. It means in more general form, you would need compatibility. It is necessary that the components are somehow compatible, at least to a um, certain extent, with each other. And this is certainly one of the key challenges also when you would like to set up, in general, cascade processes based on different catalytic or also classic organic synthetic steps. So when we look on chemoenzymatic synthesis, this means that we have to find reaction conditions at which the biocatalyst, as well as the if we want to do such a process in a concurrent fashion, as well as the chemocatalyst can um, be active under the same conditions and within, under the same process conditions. And a classic example, which turned out to be very successful for many types of processes, is dynamic kinetic resolution. In this for such a concept, the range of reaction solutions have been found in which a chemocatalyst congruently acts with a biocatalyst in one pot and enables um, the synthesis then of a chiral molecule starting from a racemic product. So more in detail, what you're doing is that typically a racemic substrate is permanently racemized under um, the control of a chemocatalyst. And one of the two enantiomers, for example, the R enantiomer, is then converted to the corresponding R product by means of an enzymatic process. Typically, or in many cases, this is a lipase catalyzed isolation, for example, of a secondary alcohol or a secondary amine forming the corresponding amide. A prerequisite, of course, is that racemization is possible for the substrate, but is um, suppressed for the product. Otherwise, you would not get the product in an azomercopio form. So this is one example which shows that by combining chemocatalysis for racemization and enzyme catalysis for getting the enantiomercopio pure compound by an enantiselective reaction step, for example, isolation, we are able to efficiently convert a racemic substrate to 100% of an enzymatic pure substrate, thus overcoming also the classic limitation of a kinetic resolution of 50%. However, this is just one example which demonstrates that chemo and biocatalysis in general can be compatible with each other. Of course, we are also very much interested in broadening the reaction scope, in broadening the application scope, the synthetic scope. And that means that we are interested in combining reactions which go beyond the combination of isomerization and a kinetic resolution. So in general, of course, such a concept to make use of enzymes and chemocatalysts in a compatible fashion and to set up multi-step one per processes can be considered for any type of processes. And in particular, of course, also beyond for CC bond carbon, um, um, CC bond formation. So in general, we are interested, of course, in combining other substrate synthesis beyond isomerization and also beyond modification of a certain enantiomer of a racemate and further derivatization. That means in principle, we can consider to start from any type of prochiral substrate or racemic substrate to convert it to an intermediate, which we do not isolate. This type of reaction can be also a construction of a carbon-carbon bond thus enlarging also um, the molecular size of a molecule and making a benefit from all the wonderful um, carbon-carbon bond formations we have, for example, in the field of chemocatalysis. And later, to modify this intermediate then with an enzymatic stem under formation of the chiral product. So in that way, we would avoid 
the need for solvents for the intermediate isolation, we could decrease the amount of waste and we could achieve a more economic and more sustainable, more efficient process to a final product. In which way could we combine enzymes and um, uh, chemocatalysis? The enzymatic step can be inserted at any stage. It can be the first stage, it can be also the second stage. And that means also vice versa for the chemocatalyst, we would be able to insert the chemocatalytic step as the first initial step or to edit later as a subsequent step after formation of the intermediates. So both options are, of course, possible and can be considered as very effective and very efficient solutions. So let's have a look on the option to at first include a chemocatalytic reaction in our sequence, followed by the formation of the intermediate, which then is directly converted by means of an enzyme to the final chiral product. What are the specific challenges for the enzyme from the perspective of biocatalysis of such a concept compared to the concept shown in the upper part? In the upper part, if I conduct an enzymatic reaction first, and then I add a chemocatalyst, as far as I'm not doing this in a concurrent fashion, there is no need for the enzyme to be compatible with the chemocatalyst. However, if I would like to do this in a concurrent fashion, or if I would like to add the enzyme sequentially after the preparation of the intermediate, but still in the presence of the chemocatalyst from the first reaction step, in such both cases, the enzyme needs to be compatible with the chemocatalyst and optionally also with components of the chemocatalytic step. That means a challenge here in these options is to find and identify compatibilities with components of the chemocatalytic step and to realize such a compatibility. So in the ideal way, as we will see later, you can conduct such a reaction in a one-part process in a reactor in which the enzyme under ideal conditions is compatible with the chemocatalyst from the first step, with the reagent from the first step, with the substrate from the first step. However, of course, in some cases, there might not be such an option of and the opportunity for compatibility. But does it mean then that we have no chance to conduct a one part process? No. We, can, we, we even in this case can conduct the one part process if we use, for example, a compartmentalization concept. That means that still having one reactor, we compartmentalize this reactor and conduct the corresponding reactions in individual compartments of these reactors. And as we will see, there are various opportunities of these compartmentalization tools. And one opportunity, of course, is heterogenization of biocatalysts or chemocatalysts with heterogeneous supports. So, in conclusion, we have many options to realize such exciting multi-step one-pot processes and also one-pot process running in a concurrent fashion of chemo and biocatalysis by applying different solutions towards um, the realization of this type of uh, desired reactions. For example, we can conduct reactions in a tandem one-pot mode. That means both catalysts act concurrently in, in one pot and also, they have a direct contact to each other, but they are compatible with each other. That's a prerequisite here. We can run also one pot process in a sequential one pot mode. That means that we complete the first reaction before adding the catalyst for the second reaction. And of course, also this opportunity can be advantageous. For example, the catalyst for the second reaction step also converts in an undesired fashion the substrate of the first reaction steps. So there is no general best, and all of these options have their advantages and, of course, also their disadvantages. And last not least, we can also consider a reactor not only as a reactor in the sense that it's filled with a solvent and um, that um, the corresponding catalysts um, are acting in a one pure solvent system, but we can also consider a reactor in a way that we um, divide the reactor into different compartments and run the reactor then um, uh, in a um, or run the reaction in such a reactor also in a way that the catalysts of the different reaction steps do not have contact directly 
to each other. And um, this, these types of concept, these types of opportunities to combine chemocatalysis and biocatalysis with a particular focus on the, rec on the use of water um, as preferred solvents for such one processes has been very recently reused, reviewed in this chemical reviews. And with this overview, I would like um, to uh, conclude that this type of one pot processes, multi-step one pot process, gives enormous opportunities for us to, simpli uh, to simplify, also to optimize um, uh, chemical multi-step reactions, to improve sustainability. It also has the opportunity to improve economy and gives us an access in a very efficient way to the final product with a prerequisite that we have to achieve compatibility of the individual reaction steps. Thank you very much for your attention.